Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at the ViewPress Tutorial 8 custom footer post. Alright, so we will be covering these main points in the video. So we're going to look at what a footer is, then we're going to look at the homepage layout footer, then we will mention the rich text footer provided by ViewPress, and then we will mention the option of using the ViewPress blog theme footer. Then we'll take a look at creating our custom footer. Now to do that, we need to know how to write a theme. Then we need to know the basics of plugins. And then we'll take a look at using the ViewPress plugin SVG icons. Then we will create our footer component. And then we'll take a look at theme inheritance and then how to use the global layout. All right, so what is a footer? All right, so now it's time to start building the custom footer component for the site. Now, before creating the footer component, like I mentioned, we're going to first describe what a footer is, then we'll mention some other options for footers provided by ViewPress and the ViewPress blog theme. All right, so a footer is located at the bottom of a page and it typically, typically contains authorship information, copyright information, contact information, and a sitemap, which is important links regardless of the current page, similar to a global nav bar. Now, for the Code Monkeys blog, we'll be building a footer that consists of links to various social media platforms, and this gives the user an easy way to interact with various content and the community. Now, you can also take a look at the footer on this page to see what we'll be designing for the blog, and to see another example, you can check out the ViewPress site footer as well. So if you come over here, you can see the footer right down here. And that's the footer on the ViewPress blog site. All right, so now you want to make sure that you have your local development server running, which should be running at local host port 8080 to see the changes that we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing, then you can try restarting your local development server. Now, I already have the site running over here. All right, and I have the config.js file open up over here, and then I have the local development server running down here in this terminal at localhost port 8080. All right, so let's get into the homepage layout footer. Now, if you remember from the previous post, the ViewPress Tutorial 6 homepage layout, ViewPress provides a way to add a footer to the homepage by adding the following to the homepage layout, which is located in the docs directory, in the docs directory inside of that readme.md file. All right, so to add the footer to the home page you can just add this to the yaml front matter block you can put the footer right here and then you can put the value that you want to appear in the footer now if you do decide to add a footer using the front matter in the home page then the html is going to look like this where you have your body tag and then you have the main tag and then you'll have a div tag with a class of footer and then down here will be whatever value you set for the footer in the YAML front matter block for your home page. All right, so we went over this in a previous tutorial, so I'm not going to code it and implement it and show it to you, all right? But if you're interested in using this, this is an option that you can go with. Now, you also have the option to use the rich text footer. So ViewPress also provides a rich text footer, which gives you the ability, the ability to easily add more functionality to your footer like links. Now, to set this type of footer, you need to use markdown slot syntax which we won't discuss in detail here. Now, since the rich text footer uses markdown slot syntax, you can only add it to markdown files and it needs to be manually added to each markdown file to be displayed. Now, these limitations are why we'll be creating a custom footer component, but if you only want to show the footer on one or a few markdown pages, then this option should work fine for you. All right, so you can take a look at the rich text footer documentation right here. And you can also take a look at the markdown slot syntax documentation right here if you are interested in the rich text footer. Now, the ViewPress blog theme also gives you the option of using a footer. Now, the CodeMonkeys blog uses the default theme, but if you're interested in using the ViewPress blog theme, then you can take a look at the footer option. So here's the documentation for that right here. Now, here are some examples of sites that use the ViewPress blog theme footer. So here's an example right here, and you can see down here 
that you have their footer right here that they implement. And then you have this example right here, and you can see the footer that's implemented right down here. All right, now, since we'll be using social media sites that are not currently supported by the footer.contact option, we won't be using this footer. And also since we're using the default theme as opposed to the ViewPress blog theme. All right, now you can contribute social media contact types by making a pull request to the ViewPress blog theme repository if you're interested. So you can come over to this repository and you can make pull requests to add other contact types to the ViewPress blog theme footer. All right, now let's get into creating the custom footer. Now, before designing the custom footer component, we need to have an understanding of the following topics. So we need to know how to write a theme in ViewPress. We need to know a little bit about plugins, and then we need to know a little bit about the ViewPress plugin SVG icons, and then we need to know about theme inheritance and the global layout that's provided by ViewPress. Now, we won't be describing every detail about each topic above since we only need to understand how to create our custom footer component. But if you're interested in learning more now, then you can check out these links right here. All right, so let's get into writing a theme. So in ViewPress, you have the ability to make your site into a theme, and this gives you the option to publish your, publish your site as an NPM package, which allows other developers to easily install and use your theme. Now, to write your theme, you need to create a theme directory in the .viewpress directory, and the docs directory for your site will now look something like this. So you have the docs directory, the .viewpress directory, and then we have our public directory, and then we'll have our theme directory, and then we'll also have that config.js file, and then on the same level as the docs directory, we have our readme.md file, which is the home page. All right, so let's go over here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up a terminal and you can see i'm in the code monkeys blog tutorials repository and i'm on the tutorial 8 branch now if we list out the contents here you can see we have our docs directory so if we cd into that we list out the contents you can see we have well let's list out so we can see the hidden files as well so and here we have that readme.md file, which is our home page, and then we have our .viewpress directory. So let's go into that. And then let's list out contents inside of here. We have our config.js file and then our public directory. Now what we want to do is we want to create that theme directory. And we will cd into that. And then now we have our theme directory. For our site now after creating the theme directory all you need to do is create a layout.view file inside of it like this and then from here you can develop your site like any other view application by organizing your theme however you want now being able to organize your theme however you want provides a lot of flexibility when creating your site but it's recommended to use the directory structure below when designing your theme so this should look familiar if you've followed along with the other tutorials so this would be our theme directory, and then inside of there we'd have our components directory, and then you'd have view files inside of there, then you can have a global components directory with view files inside of it, a layouts directory with a layout.view file, and then other layouts inside of it, and then you can have a styles directory with an index.style file and a palette.style file, and you have a templates directory with a dev.html file, and then an ssr.html file, then we have our enhance app.js file and then an index.js file. All right, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. Now, here's a description for each directory and file in the theme directory. Now, if you've if you followed along, then you should have a good understanding of this already, but we'll briefly go over it again. So the components directory consists of local components used in your theme, and then the global components directory are um, components that get automatically registered as global. So this means that you don't need to explicitly import them in a file when using them. All right, then we have our layouts directory and the this consists of the layout components used in your theme. And then we have a layout.view file, which is a mandatory layout file for every theme. And then we have a styles directory and this stores related styling for your theme. 
And then you have the index.style file, and this will override any default styling, and it allows you to globally style your site. And then we have a palette.style file, and this overrides any default styling variables and allows you to add any global styling variables. And then we also have a templates directory, and this stores HTML template files. So we have dev.html, which is an HTML template file for, de for the development environment. And then we have an ssr.html, and this is the HTML template file used in the build time. And then we have our enhance app.js file, and this will enhance the theme of your site by giving you the ability to install view plugins, add router hooks, etc. And then we have our index.js file, which is the entry file for the theme configuration. All right, so like I mentioned, this should be familiar for those that have looked at the ViewPress tutorial for directory structure post. But if you want to learn more about the directory structure in a ViewPress site, then you can check out this post right here. All right, so when creating the custom footer component, we're going to use the global components directory, the index.js file, and the layouts directory. So the global components directory will be where we add the custom footer component since we want the footer to be available globally. And the index.js file will be used to inherit the default theme using theme inheritance. And finally, the layouts directory will be where we add the global layout.view file, which allows us to add our custom footer component to the global layout of the site. Now, since we'll be using the ViewPress plugin SVG icons to add social media icons to our footer, we're going to go over what plugins are, how to install them, and how to configure them. All right, so now let's get into the basics of plugins. So plugins allow you to add global level functionality to ViewPress. All right, so you can configure them by passing in options, and it's also possible to write your own and publish them as NPM packages. All right, so to use a plugin, you need to first install it by using either Yarn or NPM. And we'll be using Yarn to install all of the plugins for the blog, but the commands for installing the plugins with NPM will also be provided. So after installing a plugin, you can configure it by adding it to the config.js file. All right, so now that we know the basics, we're ready to install and configure the ViewPress plugin SVG icons. All right, so this is how to install the plugin. So you want to run this command right here. So if I come over to our terminal over here, what I can do is I can run this command right here. So you can copy this command, then you can paste it in. And I've already installed the ViewPress plugin SVG icon, so I'm not gonna run this command. And then you also have the option to use NPM to install it right here. All right, so after installing the plugin, the package.json file should look something like this. So if you come over here, if we cd out of here, and now you can see our package.json file right there. Let me come over here to open it up. So what we wanna do is we wanna open up our package.json file. So let's come down here, and then you can see right here that I have the ViewPress plugin SVG icons installed, and there it is in the package.json file. All right, so next we need to configure the plugin by editing the config.js file. So if we come over here, and then if we open up the config.js file, we can come down here, and underneath the theme config, what we want to do is we want to add plugins, and then we want to open up an array right here, and then we will type in the way to import our SVG icons plugin. So this is how we do that. So let me format the file, and then I'll save it. So now we've imported the SVG icons plugin into our site. Now, to add the social media icons to the site, we need to create an icons directory in the docs directory. And here's what the docs directory should look like after adding the icons directory. So you'll have your docs directory, your dot view press directory, and then we'll have the icons directory and then our readme.md file, which is the home page. So if we come over here and let me just clear this. Now, if we go inside of the docs directory and if we list out the contents, and you may have noticed before that I already created this icons directory inside of here. So 
we can CD into this and then we can list out the contents inside of here. And these are all the different SVG icons that we'll be using in our footer. Now, the SVG icons plugin recommends using icon font. So here's a link to it right here. So this is icon font. So you can get the icons from right here. If you search it, if you search this website, you can find all of the icons that we're using. Um, and this will, you know, you can find the icons that we're using here and other scalable vector graphics or SVGs for your site that you want to use. And after creating an account, like I said, you can search for the icons, then you can download them. Now, when downloading the icons, you have the option to specify a color and size for the icon. And for the blog, we'll be using this color right here and a size of 200, which is the default size. Now, you can also download the icons from the Tutorial 8 branch of the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository. So if you come over here, you can also get the icons from this branch of the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository. Now, little tip here is that um, you can also use the SVG export. Um, extension right here so to easily download the icons used in the footer you can also install the browser extension SVG export so after installing the extension all you need to do is click the extension icon and then this will extract all of the SVGs including their inline styles from the current page and a new tab will open up containing all of the extracted SVGs which you can then download so if you ever see a site where you like the SVG or something then you can install this browser extension and then you can download the SVGs. All right, so we'll be using these icons for the social media sites in the footer. So we have one for GitHub, YouTube, Discord, Telegram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Patreon. All right, so after downloading the icons, the icons directory should now look something like this. We have our icons directory and then we have all of our SVGs that we downloaded. So you can see over here, I've already listed out all of these different icons. All right. Now, after adding the icons to the icons directory, the plugin will automatically load the icons and will provide a global component named VP icon. So to use the VP icon component, you need to pass a name attribute to it where the value is the name of the SVG file you want to use. And if you're interested in learning more about the plugin, then you can check out the ViewPress plugin SVG icons documentation. So you can check out this link right here if you want to learn more about the plugin. And this contains more information about configuration options, component props, and command line interface commands. All right, so now we're ready to create the custom footer component. All right, so this is our footer component. All right, so the custom footer component will be added to the global components directory. So this is what the theme directory is going to look like after we add the footer.view file. So if we come over here and what we want to do is we want to get out of this icons directory. And if we list out right here, we will see our .view press directory. So we'll go inside of there and inside of here, we want to go into the theme directory. And what we want to do is we want to create our global components directory. All right, let me just clear the screen now and we will CD into our global components. And then what we want to do is we want to create our footer.view file. All right, so this is our footer.view file. All right, so here we're creating a .view file, which is known as a single file component. And this is a special file format that allows you to encapsulate the HTML in a template tag, the JavaScript in a script tag, and the CSS in a style tag for the component. All right, so this is what the footer.view file looks like after adding these three main sections. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over here and let's open up our footer.view file. So we'll come down here, we'll open up this file. And then what we want to do is we want to add our template tag. So this is our template tag. And then what we want to do is we want to add a script tag. So this will be our script tag right there. 
uh, we don't need to do all of that. So let me just undo that. And there's our script tag. And then we'll come down here and we'll add our style tag. All right. And let's save this file. All right, so these are the main sections of our footer.view file. Now to start, we'll add the HTML to the template tag and the contents of the footer will be wrapped in a footer tag containing two child tags, which would be a div tag and a p tag. And the div tag will contain seven child a tags, one for each of the social media icons. And the p tag will contain authorship information for the block. All right, now each A tag will have the following attributes. It's gonna have an href, a target, and a rel attribute. And the href specifies the URL of the page the link goes to. And the target specifies where to open the link. And the rel attribute specifies the relationship between the current page and the link. All right, so each A tag will also have a child VP icon tag, which will have the name attribute discussed earlier. All right, so this is what the footer.view file looks like after adding the HTML to the template tag. So you can see right here, if we come up over here and then if we add our footer tag, then we're gonna create that div tag that we talked about. And then inside of there, we would then create our A tag. And then we would give it these properties right here. So I'm just gonna copy in these properties right here and I'll paste them in. Let's format this file. All right. And then right here we have our VP icon. So I'll copy this in and let me paste that. Let's format the file. We'll save this. Now, you know, so right here we have our div tag, then we have our a tag right here with our href, and this one goes to the GitHub for the Code Monkeys organization, and then we have that target with the value of blank, and our rel with the value of no open or no refer, and then we have that VP icon, which has a name of GitHub. All right, so let's just copy these other a tags right here, and then what we'll do is we will come down here and we will paste this and then let's format the file and then we will save the file. And this, these are the seven A tags that we talked about inside of our div tag right here. So we have one for YouTube, we have one for Discord, we have one for the Telegram, and then we also have one for the Code Monkeys Twitter, and then for the LinkedIn page, and then for Patreon. All right, and then what we also wanna do is we want to add a P tag right down here underneath of our div tag. So if we come down here, we can add that in and we'll format the file and then we will save it. All right, so this is what our template tag is going to consist of for our footer component. All right, so it's basically just our footer tag, our div tag, and then we have our seven A tags with href values, which are URLs to the social media sites. And then we have a target with a value of blank, and then our rel attribute with a value of no open or no refer. And then inside of each A tag, we're gonna have a VP icon tag with the name of the social media site that's gonna be in our footer. And then we have those seven A tags right there. And then we have a P tag underneath of that, which will say made by and for code monkeys. All right, so each href, like I said, has a value of the related URL for the social media site. Each target has a value of blank and each rel has a value of no open or no refer. And as mentioned in a previous post, these values for the target and the rel attributes are used to prevent a vulnerability known as reverse tab napping, which can happen when a user clicks on an external link. Now, all major browsers have fixed this vulnerability, but you can still include these attributes in case a user is using a browser without the security update. All right, now each name attribute has a value 
of the name of the related SVG file with the .svg extension omitted. All right, so right here, the name for this is just GitHub. Now the SVG icon file that we included would be github.svg, but we just omit that .svg extension. All right, so now we're gonna export the JavaScript in the script tag, and we're gonna give the component a name. So this is what the footer component is going to look like after updating the script tag. All right, so if we come down here to the script tag, what we can do is we can just export default, and then we're just going to give it a name. So I'm just going to copy this over and then format, and then we will save. All right, so this is what we will be including in our script tag. We are just exporting it and then giving our component a name of footer. All right, so finally what we want to do is we want to style the component by adding the following CSS classes. So we're gonna add a class of footer, a class of icons, and a class of made by. And we'll be adding the footer class to the footer tag, the icons class to the div tag, and the made by class to the p tag. And then we'll add styling for each of the CSS classes in the style tag. And this is what the footer.view file is going to look like after we style it. So up here in our footer tag, what we're going to do is we're going to say class, and then we'll say footer. And then what we're going to do is inside of our div tag, we will say class, and then we will give it a value of icons. And then if we go down to our p tag down here, we're going to give this a class of made by and then down here you can see we have our style tag so we're going to first include the lang attribute and we're going to set that to be stylus and then what we're going to do is we are going to give it scoped right there and then i'm just going to copy in this css right down here so we will put that in there. And then what we want to do is we want to format this file and then we will save it. All right, so the lang attribute used in the style tag is used to specify which preprocessor we want to use in the component. So here we're using stylus, which is the default preprocessor used by ViewPress. Now, if you want to learn how to use a different preprocessor, then you can check out the using preprocessors documentation right here. Now, the scoped attribute is also used in the style tag, which means all of the styling only applies to the current component. So you can take a look at the scoped CSS to learn more about the scoped attribute. But basically any styling that we add in this style tag right here is only gonna be related to the footer component. So if you have another tag somewhere in the site that would have a footer class, then this styling wouldn't affect that tag with a class of footer because this is only local. This is locally scoped to our footer component. Now, you can see right here that the footer class is given display flex, so right here, and this is going to define a flex container for all of the direct children of the A tag where the footer class is used. And in this case, the footer class is used on the footer tag, which means the div tag and the p tag will be in a flex container. So you can see up here that we have our footer tag and then the direct children is this div tag right here. And then if we come down to this p tag right here. All right, so the footer class is also given a, is also given a flex direction of column. And this means that the flex items in the flex container. So the div tag and the p tag will be stacked on top of each other in a column as opposed to the default row setting. And the flex items are then given the align items uh, with a value of center, which will horizontally center the flex items since the flex direction is set to column. And the footer class is then given a padding of 2.5 rem and then another 2.5 rem and then 2 rem, and this will set a padding of 2.5 rem for the top, 2.5 rem for the left and right, and then 2 rem for the bottom. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Flexbox, then you can check out a complete guide to Flexbox right here. 
And then you can also check out the basic concepts of Flexbox. And also, if you're unfamiliar with CSS units like REM, then you can check out this CSS units right here. All right, so that'll give you a better understanding of what I just talked about up here if it didn't make any sense to you at all. Um, you can check out those links to learn more about Flexbox and more about CSS units, or you can just copy in the styling and just set it if you're content with the way that it looks. All right, so the icons class right here is also given a display flex, which means each A tag will be in a flex container since they're all direct children of the div tag. So you can see right here that we have our div tag, which has a class of icons. So each A tag is a direct descendant of the div tag. All right, so that means that they're all gonna be inside of a flex container. And the icons class is also given a margin bottom of 1.75 rem and a font size of two rem, and that's gonna increase the size of the icons and the CSS selector right here. So right here, um, this is then used, which selects all of the A tags where the parent tag has a class of icons, except for the last A tag. All right, so it will, it's gonna select every single A tag except for this last A tag right down here. All right, and then we have a margin right with this value right there. All right, now if you're unfamiliar with CSS selectors, then you can check out this link for the CSS um, selector reference right here. All right. Now, finally, we have the made by class, which is given a margin of zero, and this will remove the margin from the P tag. So this class is being applied to the P tag, and that's going to remove the margin for it. Now, if you didn't feel comfortable with the CSS discussed above, then here's a good resource to go through. So you can go through the CSS tutorials right here. All right, so as we continue to develop the blog, we'll be adding more styling to the footer to make it look presentable in different scenarios, like on smaller screen sizes, when a sidebar is present, etc. And this is what the footer.view file should look like. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like when we are all said and done with it. Okay. So you can take a look at that. Now, after adding the global components directory to the theme directory, you may have noticed that the site is rendering a blank page. And this is because we created a directory in the theme directory. So ViewPress is now looking for a layout.view file in the theme directory. All right, so if we come over here and let's see if we refresh this, if we restart this. We start this to see if we get the blank page. Yep, so we have the blank page right here. And that's because we're looking for that layout.view file in the theme directory. Now, we have the option of creating a layouts directory and placing our own layout.view file inside of it. But as previously mentioned, we're going to be using theme inheritance to inherit the default theme. All right, so let's take a look at theme inheritance. So theme inheritance allows you to pass all of the capabilities from a parent theme to a child theme. All right, so in our case, the parent theme is the default theme and we'll be creating the child theme as we develop the blog. Now to create the child theme from the default theme, we need to configure the extend option in the index.js file. So first we need to create the index.js file in the theme directory, which should now look like this. So if we come over here and we open up our terminal, what we want to do is let's go back down to theme inheritance down here. So inside of our theme directory, so let's go back out to the theme directory. So what we want to do is we want to create our index.js file. And then what we want to do is we want to configure the extend option. So let's close out of this. And then if we come over here, we can search for our index.js file. And then what we want to do is we want to run this right here. So if I just copy this code over, and then if we save this, now right here, what this is doing is this will inherit the default theme. So we should now be rendering alongside the child theme 
instead of the blank page. All right, so if we come over here and if we refresh, we may have to restart our development server. Let's see if we restart the development server. And then if we refresh, yep. All right, so here is the page. Now, let's go right over here. So now you may have noticed that we have our a missing layout.view file. And this is interesting because the layout.view file is listed as a mandatory file, but we didn't need to create one in the theme directory. And this is because you don't need to explicitly create the layout.view file when you're inheriting from the default theme, all right? Because the default theme already has a layout.view file. All right, so the child theme is also able to override files in the parent theme by creating a file with the same name in the same location. And we're gonna go over how to override parent theme files in more detail in future tutorials. Now you can also override some parent theme files by just using the same name as the parent theme file in the child theme. So for example, we're going to override the global layout.view file by using the same name for the file in the child theme and the code provided by the documentation. All right, so now let's create the layouts directory in the theme directory, and this is where we'll be adding the global layout.view file, which again allows us to add our custom footer component to the global layout of the site. All right, so let's come over here and let's create our layouts directory. So if we come over here and what we want to do is we are inside of the theme directory and what we want to do is we want to make a layouts directory and if we list out now we can see we have our layouts directory and then we'll cd into that and then what we want to do is we want to create our global layout.view file and now we have our global layout.view file now the global layout.view file is responsible for handling the global layout of the site all right, so here is the path to the default global layout.view file provided by ViewPress. So this is where that default global layout.view file is located. So it's in the node modules. Now you can also view the code for the default global layout right here. So this is the GitHub that contains the global layout.view file. You can take a look at that. Now the default global layout gives you the ability to render different layouts depending on if the page.path is defined. So we mean what we mean by that is the URL of the page is valid. And if the page.frontmatter.layout file is defined, so if only the page.path is defined, then the default layout will be used, which is layout. And if the page.frontmatter.layout is defined, then the specific layout for that page will be used. And if the page.path is not defined, then the not found layout is used, which is the layout for the 404 page provided by ViewPress. Now, in most scenarios, you don't need to edit the default global layout, but if you want to add a global header or a global footer to your site, then this is a good place to add it. Now, all of this logic that I just talked about, if you take a look at the code, it'll make a little bit more sense. All right, so to override and edit the global layout.view file, we're going to use the code provided by the global layout section from the documentation. So the code provided by the documentation basically is going to use a computed property to determine the layout for a specific page based on if the URL of the page is defined and if the page uses a specific layout provided by the front matter. So this is similar to the logic previously described when discussing the global layout. So this is the code from the documentation. So if we come over here, let's just close out of the terminal and then let's go to our global layout.view file and we will just copy in this code right here. So let me just use this copy button and we'll paste that in and format and save the file. Now right here, you can see we have our template tag and we have our div tag right here and then it has a header tag and then a component a footer tag down here and then we have our script tag right here and then this has our computed property that we mentioned and then we have a layout right here so this is a computed property called layout and then if this dot page dot path is defined and then if this dot front matter dot layout is defined then we're going to return 
the front matter for this layout right here. Now, this will return. Um, now, if the front matter dot layout isn't specified, then we're just going to return layout. So this would just be our default layout. And then if the page dot path isn't defined, then we're going to return not found, which then shows that 404 page. All right. So this right here is what I talked about um, when we discussed this logic up here. All right, so what we're going, we're going to remove the example header tag and replace the example footer tag with our previously created footer component. So what we want to do is we want to come up here and we want to remove this header tag and we want to remove this footer tag. And then what we want to do is we want to come down here and we want to add our footer component. All right, so, and then we're gonna leave the rest of this the same down here. All right, so here's a quick note on importing, importing the footer component. So notice that we don't need to explicitly import the footer component since we made it a global component by adding it to the global components directory in the theme directory. All right, so now if we come over here to our site and assuming that we set everything up correctly and we may have to restart our local development server to see the changes so let's see and if we come over here and we refresh yep okay so you can see down here that we have our footer component so we have our seven social media icons down here so we have one for github youtube discord telegram twitter linkedin and patreon and then we have our made by and for code monkeys right down there all right so in this video we went over a whole bunch of stuff. So we went over what a footer is. We went over the homepage layout footer. We went over the rich text footer provided by ViewPress. And then we went over the option of using the ViewPress blog theme footer. Then we went then we talked about how to create our custom footer component, which required us to learn how to write a theme in ViewPress, the basics of plugins, required us to know about the ViewPress plugin SVG icons. And then we had to look at how to create our footer component. And then we had to talk about theme inheritance. And then we had to discuss how to use the global layout. All right, so a whole bunch of stuff was talked about in this video. All right, so the next steps are gonna be we're going to be discussing how to override the index.style file and the palette.style files, um, which will allow us to add our own global styling to the site. And the global styling is going to include background color, accent color, text color, etc. All right, so we will see you in the next video.